This movie is called Fode Rage. The origin of that word lies in my having uh, been driving in this car with my friend Etta Cetera, and I went off on a binge of exaggerated pseudo road rage, and I think Etta was a little bit taken aback, so I explained to her that I was just kidding, that I was doing it for the sake of the entertainment for myself. And she said, oh, it's faux road rage. I said, yeah. She said, that's fode rage. So she coined the word fode, F-A-U-D, rage, R-A-G-E, which I thought was really funny. So now I'm going to show you how fode rage works. The basic idea is do not actually experience road rage. Uh, always drive very politely and safely. Let pedestrians cross the street regardless of where they're going without trying to whip around them as if they are mere obstacles in your speed of driving. Uh, don't really get so pissed off at somebody that you honk your horn at them or scream things at them or whatever. Uh, always be polite, safe in your driving. But enjoy the opportunity of getting irritated by stupid things that your fellow drivers do by having highly exaggerated responses to them, some of which are extremely draconian, others of which are just exercises in flights of the imagination. So hopefully a few people will do some mildly stupid things like forget to signal, which is very common. Uh, maybe if we're lucky, somebody will do something incredibly annoying, like hold their hand down on their horn for a few minutes, or uh, stop in the middle of the road to text while cars are unable to pass them, or whatever. And uh, those things will make it much more stimulating for me to have food rage. I'm looking, but I'm not really seeing any opportunity, any stimulus for having actual faux rage here. Uh, there's a pickup truck pulling up behind me. Maybe if he hits me or something, that would help, but let's hope that doesn't actually happen. Or maybe I'll get so preoccupied with my monologue that I'll do something stupid, in which case I can have faux rage at myself, which I've never done before.
I'm looking for faults in everyone around me and not finding any fault with anybody, so so far it's a pretty disappointing day. I wanted to do this on a sunny day when it's fairly warm so that I could ensure that I'd be in a really good mood so that I could make sure that the faux rage is truly faux road rage influenced by my good mood. Maybe it's too nice of a day. I feel great. This is really ruining it. Well, this bluebird bus here has enough sense to stop for me, but none of the other traffic does, so now I can get pissed off. The person who was driving the white car and the gray car should really experience a sort of merger between the two cars. I don't mean an accident exactly. I mean the two cars should suddenly become one. A lighter gray car, let's say and the drivers should become one, but aware of their separateness too, with four arms and four legs. They should become incredibly confused and should be forced to stop by the side of the road so that people like me can pull into the parking lot and then the ATM line of the drive-in part of PNC Bank. Now that wasn't much of a rant. I guess I wasn't fowed enough. I'll have to keep working on this. Did you get the shot of the Bluebird bus? I didn't notice. No. Okay. That would be an instance where it would be a good thing to swing the camera around to show the bus mm -hmm. and the car's going past. patient enough at the moment to mm -hmm. be irritated by the woman in the car in front of me who could be said to be taking entirely too long at the bank machine. In fact, she's done now, so I can't really complain. Although, she's not getting out of the way fast enough. So I guess that, uh, Maybe having her the trunk of her car fill up with ice cream, making it one of the most incredibly unpleasant cleanup jobs possible, would be a good idea. 
it would also be a good idea. Oh, it's temporarily out of service. So the woman who just used it fucked it up. Or maybe she didn't fuck it up. I'm being too forgiving today. I'm really not experiencing the food rage enough. I'm one of those people who typically will stop and not block the exit entrance to the get-go because there are often people waiting to come out and I let them come out. But I can't even complain about the car in front of me right now or the car in the right lane even though they were blocking that because there was nobody trying to get out. If you make it less tight, it yeah. won't make that squeaking sound, but then yeah. you just have to basically keep your hand on the yeah. handle. You could get a shot of this uh, newly finished road up here. Ordinarily, at this point, I have plenty of opportunities for food rage because this road had been excavated and it was horrible to drive on and it took them entirely too long to get it so that it was nice and smooth as it is now. But they've gotten it done, even though they haven't put the lines down yet, so I suppose I could complain about that. 
because it seems to me like they should have time to get their lines down. Oh, there's somebody. They were driving on the wrong side of the road. Yes, you are a moron. You should have your head taken off of your body, and it should float up above the top of your car, which is a position that you'll be doomed to drive in until your car runs out of gas, which it never will. So you are never going to be able to stop, and your head will be floating above the top of the car, but you will never die, and... You will continually be hitting your head on obstacles above the top of the car because you were just driving on the wrong side of the road. And if I had been a less good driver, I might have hit you as I was turning in. I just drank some chai latte, which is a very mild stimulant, not nearly as much as coffee is. Perhaps under the influence of it, I will feel a little bit more ener energetic in my food rate. behind me, nobody in front of me, only people in the other lane, and they're staying on their side of the double yellow line. There's not even that much oncoming traffic, so I might actually get a chance to turn left. If the light changes quickly enough, which there's a remote chance it will because the traffic is blocked up one block away, but now the unblocking has happened, so I probably don't stand much of a chance here. In fact, I no longer stand a chance at all. There is a very attractive young woman going past. Uh, now it looks like this person might have let me go, so they were being nice, but I blew it. If somebody blinks their lights at me, oh, here we go. Ah, I was too lucky. Again, no reason for food rage. Everything is going my way. This 
person signaled in front of me, so I can't complain about a lack of signaling. Oh, that person in front of us just ran the red light. I do that all the time, but I'm going to act like I don't and say that I think all of their tires should get flats right now. That red car, which might not have been visible in the shot, but it should get all four flats, uh, but not block the road somehow. So they should get all four flats, but then the car should levitate about 10 feet up so that everybody can drive underneath of them and they can't get out of the car to change the flats. And they should probably starve to death in their car, too. While they wait for help to come, but no one notices them. And the fire department never comes. <clears throat> and they don't have the nerve to jump out the 10 feet from their car, even dangling from the bottom of the door jam, the door frame. I would wish something harsher on them, except that really running the red light like that just as it turned red is not that big of an infraction from my perspective. Uh, now I could complain about this car. I think I will. They could have been over towards the right. I might have been able to make it through the light, but instead they didn't turn their turn signal on until they got up to the road and then they stayed in my lane the entire time. So that car maybe the passenger side door should fall off without hitting anybody adjacent to it no pedestrians uh, but it should slide underneath their car and then rip up through the back seat of their car annihilating basically under everything underneath the car without spilling any fluids that would damage the environment nearby but startling them and forcing them to live in a permanent nightmare state. Well, not permanent. Let's say we'll sentence them to a nightmare state for about a month. And here's one of those instances where the orange cones don't really give me enough room to drive on my side of the road. Or they just barely do. Clutching at straws here. Uh, clutching at road offenses, as it's known to food rage specialists. Of which, as far as I know, I am the only one. <clears throat> Ooh, another attractive woman. I could really go off on a tangent that's not a food rage tangent right now, but I think I will contain myself. But I like the look. I'm sorry to leave her. But she's walking her dog in a very wealthy neighborhood, which means that if she were to be so foolish as to fall in love with me, I would no doubt blow it because it would probably result in a financially secure future for me, which would be so against my way of doing things that I wouldn't be able to handle it. Having passed by two previous chances to marry women from millionaire families, one of those intersections where if one were to actually stop where the stop sign is, one would not be able to see whether traffic was coming or not.
a car in front of me either had shorting out lights just then, which is what it was, or they were signaling that they were going to turn left. If I had not realized that they had shorting out lights, I might have gotten into the right lane, but I can identify with the problems with their lights, which can be seen now in the shot, because as you'll notice, the right-hand rear light is not working. That's okay. Having been poor most of my life, I can identify with anybody who has a malfunctioning car. Now we're coming up on one of the prime problem spots in the city's driving. But it's 1.43 in the afternoon, so I probably won't have any trouble with it. But we're about to come up to We're about to come up to the place where the Pitt students cross from one part of the campus to another on Bigelow Boulevard. And around noon, there are usually thousands of students who are, or hundreds, probably thousands, who are crossing there who show no mercy for the cars that get backed up who have to stop to let them pass. I usually just patiently wait. But other drivers aren't so patient. In this case, I'm in luck today. There is nobody that I have to stop for. And this school bus is over here on the right, as they often are in the straight only lane. Here's a person who could be oblivious enough to step out in front of the car, but they didn't do it. And again, here. Pedestrian crosswalk, no pedestrians crossing. I am incredibly in luck today. Of course, it's just because of the time of day. Same thing for this turn here. There are often large crowds of students crossing and none today. So I am again really in luck.